Okay, I have some news I bet almost nobody is expecting. I got a job teaching at the University of Oxford. That's right, starting on January 20th, I'm going to be teaching a fully online course at the University of Oxford on multivariable calculus and vector calculus, one of my favorite subjects in mathematics. I'm going to tell you about why I love this subject in a moment, but first I just got to say for my students at the University of Victoria, do not worry, I am still there, I'm still teaching in person algebraic topology and linear algebra next semester, but this online course is intended for, well, for all of you, my viewership around the world. So here's the idea. We're going to have two different cohorts. Each of the cohorts is pretty small, like only 12 students. I want to be able to actually meet and interact and work with all of you. Before each of the weekly classes, I'm going to have these online video modules where you can learn the basics of the idea. And then during the classes, we're going to have kind of pretty fun problem solving problems where we're going to work collaboratively to solve some interesting problems in multivariable and vector calculus. At the end, if you go to three quarters of the sessions, you get a sort of certificate of completion from Oxford that you can uh, put on your resume. And re the reason why I'm excited about this is that I really love working with my in-person students at the University of Victoria where I get to, to work and interact with them regularly and really see the transformation that they get to make over a semester. But for all of my YouTube fans, it's kind of a little bit one directional. I put out a video and, and maybe it gets a lot of views and a lot of people are helped by it, but I don't have that interaction. At the same time, I know like lots of YouTubers just sort of make pretty terrible, you know, courses they're trying to sell. I've never wanted to do that. But then one day, Tom Crawford from Tom Rocks Math reached out to me. He was on a cruise that was going through my city of Victoria. He's like, Trevor, come out, we've got to talk. So we met up, we hung out for an evening, and he pitched me on this idea of teaching a course in conjunction with Oxford. And it just seemed like such a great opportunity to create something that was really high quality, that would be really personal with my students, but still part of something really legitimate like Oxford's continuing education department. Now let me tell you why I love multivariable and vector calculus so much. In single variable calculus, we study functions like y equal to x squared. But in multivariable calculus, there's all kinds of objects we can study. For example, surfaces like this. Z is a function of x and y. Well, for single variable calculus, you have a single input and a single output. For multivariable calculus, you can have many different inputs. But you can also look at curves like this. In this, you have one input, t, which I've interpreted as a time input. And as t changes, x, y, and z change. What's going on here is now we have multiple different outputs and a single input. And you can combine those. When I look at a plot like this, which you might see on the news, all of those arrows say at every different x, y location, you get an arrow telling what's happening to, for example, the wind. And this is something referred to as a vector field. A vector field is something that has multiple inputs, like at every location x, y, you draw an output which also has multiple outputs. Maybe I'll write that m of x, y, and n of x, y. And we can visualize these as a little two-dimensional vector starting from every spot. And so you get all sorts of beautiful vector fields. This is kind of a spiral one. This one's just beautiful. Uh, this one's done in three dimensions. So we have curves, we have surfaces, and we have vector fields. What can we do with them? One of the things that you might be interested in studying is tangents. I mean, tangents were a big part of single variable calculus for a curve. What kind of tangents do we have as a function of time? And this leads to all sorts of interesting questions, like we can talk about how curvy a curve is, and all of these sort of notions are going to interrelate. We could also go to surfaces, and instead of a, a tangent line, you might get a tangent plane. This is going to be relevant for things like optimization. So that was for derivatives, but the other side of calculus is integrals. One of the big things that we did in single variable calculus was to approximate the area under a curve. We can approximate the volume under a surface. Take your little rectangles, break them up finer and finer, and we get these notions of integration. We're going to see how to do this kind of integration. We're going to do it in all sorts of coordinate systems, like we'll be able to do it in spherical coordinate systems, and cylindrical coordinate systems, and more arbitrary coordinate systems. But where the course is going to most shine is when it comes to the interaction between vector fields and curves and surfaces. Like you imagine you're swimming along in some crazy current, you're trying to go along some path from A to B, you might be interested in the tendency by which your path aligns with the underlying, say, velocity field of the water that you're moving through. And there's crazy theorems here. There's this fundamental theorem of line integrals, for example, and it's very much like the fundamental theorem of calculus, that somehow when you accumulate changes along your path, 
all that matters is the difference on the endpoints. Like if I have a vector field and have like a closed curve in two dimensions or like a closed surface in three dimensions, I could ask like, what's the tendency for the vector field to cross over this region? And indeed there's these really powerful theorems, Green's theorem and Divergence theorem, that we're gonna study that relate to how these interactions between vector fields and curves and vector fields and surfaces. There's similarly sort of tangential versions of these theorems where if you have things spiraling along, you wanna measure the tendency for the spiraling along the edge of your boundaries, we get things, Green's theorem in its circulation form and Stokes' theorem. And the best part is not only are we gonna look at all of these theorems and try to understand them and see what they're saying, we're gonna see how they're all related and capture sort of a unifying idea in vector calculus. And so that is just a little trailer of what is coming up if you're interested to sign up at the link, which I will put down in the description. Other than that, this is my final video of 2025. So a huge thank you to everybody who has been following along on my journey. Don't worry, there's lots more to come uh, here on YouTube as well. It's not like I'm gatekeeping things away. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all in 2026. Thank you for everybody for being here. We'll do some more math in the next video.